All right, and welcome back. Uh, we are just seconds away from starting our match with Marietta College versus Ohio North. In fact, Champions Select has already gotten uh, underway, so I'm going to go ahead and get the pro dress set. Not even any time to go over the roster for the, the Pioneers. So right now, Mary's going to be blue side. They banned out the Ezra. Ohio Norder has banned out the Fizz. So we're not going to see either of those right now. So we're going to see the next band. And Marietta will take out Pantheon. Very interesting choice for uh, the jungler. Uh, Marietta must have seen something from Ohio Norder's roster that they do not like. Uh, we're going to see the Echo being banned. So, so far, a lot of targets are going against Relic. Because uh, he has played Fizz and Echo before. Although I don't think we've ever seen a Fizz in match yet. But it looks like the strategy is to try to take uh, ban out uh, oh. Relic. Oh. Alright. Yeah, so get your headset on. So joining me we have uh, Tyler Salonitro who just Sorry, came off of I just great... got done 3-0-ing Muskingum. Okay, well it's a great win with uh, Muskingum. A, a 3 0 win. Very strong. So congratulations to the Overwatch team. Uh, now we're going to focus on the League of Legends team. So, uh, Mary does ban out Vladimir, and Ohio Norton decided to take out Caitlyn. Uh, oh. Very strong uh, bot lane. And then we see the Samira out. I knew this could happen. Samira just came out this week, and according to GLEC rules, there's no rule that says that a brand new champion uh, is instant banned, unlike the uh, LCS and LEC. Isn't it in uh, Rainbow they do that, though? New champions are banned? Uh, yes, they do. In Rainbow Six, new ops are banned for like the entire season. So it would make sense that they did it for League, but I guess right. not. Well, that's, that's Collegiate R6 rules. Uh, GLEC rules don't have that rule yet. We might put it in at some point. I, I am know in, noticing in that. And when you win with the Zach pick, something Marietta struggled with against uh, their match two weeks ago, which I believe was against Defiance, I think. No, no, no not no, Defiance. Last, last week was Trine, and the week before that was uh, Mountain Union. Mount uh, Union, yes, yes, yes. That's the may have struggled against the Zach against Mount Union. Now we're gonna see what Ohio North's next pick is. They're gonna go with the the Senna possibly, and Senna's always. I mean, that could be an AD Senna, it could be a support Senna. We'll just have to see how that goes. Yes, we have many Matt Williamsons in chat. That meme's never gonna die. It should never die. It needs to die. Listen, if you are a Matt Williamson, give. Marietta College, your Twitch Prime sub. I also, already, give us your... I you, already did! If you, if there are any other Matt Williamsons in chat, give, please support the stream by giving Marietta College your Twitch Prime sub. Right. That would be greatly appreciated. So we're going to see the Nautilus uh, being picked along with the Jarvan. If I remember correctly, uh, I believe Rico is playing uh, game one under support. Yes, I know he likes playing Nautilus. And Brimstone will be on the Jarvan. I think Samira is so new. I don't even know what lane she's going to be in. I don't know if she's a bot lane or if she's now, a top it lane. Now is War Cyclone or uh, Relic who's going to be picking the Samira here? Yeah, I think Samira is ADC. So new, I haven't had a chance to study. I've been great I have no clue. all week. I have no clue about Samira either. Okay. I, uh, yeah, we're gonna... War Cyclone is my roommate, and I've never heard anything about Samira. So. Because she's brand new. just came out this week. Uh, we see Ohio Norton's pick set for the top lane. Uh, so now we're gonna see the final bands. I, I would expect them to still target Relic, uh, but we'll see what they decide to do because Maria still has to pick their mid and maybe their top. I, I, I... now the Ezreal ban is oh. very okay. So that was an orn, but something happened there. I believe Pro Draft kind of. I think that was an orn. Yeah, I'm seeing it in the uh, the chat. That was supposed to be an orn ban. Okay. So. okay. Well, the Ezreal ban on the side of uh, Marietta College could be something as Ezreal, uh, good hero. Apparently, I remember last time I was caught up with the game, he was pretty meta. Uh, you get a lot of value out of him, but at the same time, you have to be good with him. And it takes a lot of time to get that value out of him. Mm -hmm. yeah. and Ezreal's just very, he's a very strong bot laner right now, so it makes sense. So I'm wondering if Marietta is banning Ezreal to try and punish uh, or restrict ONU because I mean we've seen Marietta go up against Ezreal before and they've done perfectly fine mm -hmm. so I wonder if this is just a ONU type deal yeah they're, they're banning out the Diana so so a couple of very fo focused bands they don't want Cyclone on Kaylin they don't want Yuki on Orn they don't want Relic on Diana so, so those are very specific champions and we're going to see this looks like the Syndra may be in Marietta that's a good band Marietta has struggled with Syndra in the past mm-hmm 
Now we'll see what uh, Ohio Northern is going to go with next. It looks like there's going to be Cled up. Okay, this is interesting. So usually, so is that going to be a maybe a Cled mid? Because double check chat to make sure that's not something else. No, we're going to see a set and a Kled. Usually those are two top laners. Hmm. I guess we are going to find out uh, in just a bit. I'm wondering... Yeah, this is a very interesting composition. I, I can't really piece it together. And it looks like Raelix is going to go with Oriana in the mid lane. So yeah, pretty good... Set up with what Marriott has for a nice team fight comp. Mal guy can do the roots. You got the the ult from Oriana to bring everyone in. You got the Cataclysm coming from Jarvin to trap everyone. So as long as get everyone together, you're in pretty good shape. But now we see the Zir, which is kind of the exact opposite of that, with that Sharima shuffle to try to push everyone away. So this is interesting. So the question is, well, either set or clad or support. So I don't know which one's which. Uh, so we're going to get uh, the game here underway here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to uh, the client here. We are finalizing stuff. Here. Uh, all right. So as we're... Wait, I pushed the wrong button, didn't I? It should be blue. There we go. So we're going to give it a chance to get things started up. Uh, I got us. All right, so I got to play for one second. So you guys take over. I'll be right back. You can stay. Hey, it's your loss. The spear will find your back. You used to. I'm absolutely livid. Right. So something in which that we've been thinking about doing is trying to stream every day of the week or trying to incorporate different things on our Twitch and YouTube channels. So if you got any good ideas, um, please let us know in the Twitch chat. Um, we were thinking about doing stuff such as tutorials, discussions, so formulas, and playthroughs of games such as Fire Emblem Three Houses or other Switch games. If we can get... <coughs> Excuse me. If we can get a capture card sometime soon. Also, we were planning on doing a game night such as Jackbox. Um, something else could be Among Us or other ideas like that. Understand. Yes, we did do Jackbox game nights in the past. So if you are willing to come out and hang out with us, some of the esports players or anything like that, consider leaving your options in chat what you want to do. Uh, and we might potentially bring back Jackbox if that is something everybody is interested in. But we will be starting up this game soon. Uh, Marietta College is, uh, uh, Marietta is, I believe, have a record of 
two or one and two with their first win being against um, Union, and they went down nine last week. And or correction, it might be two and one. I believe it's best two. No, no, no. I'm talking the record. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's two and one because I know that they did win the first. They won their first game, which was against. I cannot remember at the time, but they did end up beating Mount Union. I think that that was their second match of the season, which they ended up going up 2-0, and then they lost to Trine last week. So, uh, I have a good, strong record for the, the semester. Good start out by uh, Married at League of Legends. So, they're going to be looking to hold that here today against... Uh, Ohio Northern. Now, I don't know much about Ohio Northern's League of Legends team. However, I do know a lot about their esports team in general, and they do have a pretty decent esports team. So, we might be seeing a really good match on our hands today, folks. We're on a day, so we still got a little bit of a wait, and you guys will be getting it at around 5 30 so you're gonna even more delayed than we are going but that is just per tournament rules so delay respect air delay yep. mm -hmm. okay did we figure out the position okay so that's a set support yes that is a very interesting uh, selection there. We'll have to see how that plays out. So Tyler, I got a question for you. Yes. So if anyone was interested in finding out more about Marietta Esports, what social media sites could they go to? Uh, well, we have all of them, actually. So, whether you are like a Matt Williamson over here and have a Facebook, you can go on to Facebook and search up Marietta Esports. Um, uh, we haven't, I believe we are, we have recently made an Instagram page. Over the summer, yep. Yep, so we have that and TikTok, which were made over the summer, but TikTok did just get banned, so. Actually, it did not. They're going through the court ruling, but most people have TikTok anyway. If you still it got have banned it. from the App Store, so you can't download it. Yeah, they're trying to get it overturned. So if you're an avid TikTok user, don't be too upset. If you still have it on your phone, you'll be able to use it or just make a um, make a Canadian store account you can and then also, you can download and use TikTok. <laughs> you can also head on over to our uh, website. Uh, I don't know if the website for the uh, official Marietta College website has updated to put sports esports under their athletics yet. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's just Marietta Esports. If you just look it up, you'll find the website. Um, the main site? Yeah, yeah just marietta.edu slash uh, esports dash team. Also, there's probably a link down below, behind the below the channel. You can click on and go check it out. All of our social medias, in fact, are included down below underneath the channel on our channel panels. So if you're interested in checking any one of those out and need more information, then that is where you can go. But a lot of the stuff we get done through is through Twitter. And feel free, if you are also interested, to join the Discord because that is where half of us are half of our days. And that is the easiest way to get into contact with us if you are wanting to, us to host a game that, you know, would be a fun night that everyone can play. Or if you're interested in Let's Plays, please let us know. We are here for uh, you guys, the audience, and we want to cater to what you guys want to do. If it's a fun night or if you want something like a tutorial on one of the games that uh, we play in Tournament League, well, All right, folks, it looks as though we will be heading into the match. Uh... Oh, that's, that's fine. Oh. Just switch the overlay over. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was fine. And it was correct. Yeah. There you go. Now we got the ejection timers. All right.
Let's see where Owen Yu decides they want to set up first. This is. Yep, the Miko and War Cyclone duo scrolling through the jungle. You'll see them two together most of the entirety of the match. 30 seconds until minions spawn. Last minute decisions are being made on both sides as to what lane they are going to play down. Look like the draw may go in for quest based on their placement. All right, it looks as though minions should be minions spawning spawn. here, and this match is about to get underway. Now, where is Owen Yu, correction, what do you play first? This is, all of their members are on that one side of the jungle. Looks like they will be going that direction first. Let's draw, yep. Yeah, yeah definitely. Like both Marietta and Owen Yu going for the same thing. So Marietta is going to start with her blue side buff to get the mana regen for their support, uh, the for their jungler. And I'm going to start with their red side buff to give a uh, push draw. Voice Cyclone and Rico are just taunting, or just going back and forth with uh, Iconic and Kai here. Both teams just trying to farm up their gold at the moment. On Marietta's end, which are the... Which are the characters that are going to be in the end game or so, and which ones are... Uh, helpful in this part, I may add. Yeah. So, both teams have both have a pretty steady farm going right now. No one's taking uh, a stance at each other just yet. Miki and Aggression poking at each other as Aggression looking to take something onto Miki, but they both back off as Aggression just dropped down to half HP and Miki has to retreat. Just a Brimstone was going down to half HP, but Miki taking Aggression onto onto Aggression. Aggression drops down to half HP as Rico or Jugas and Warcycle are taking the stance onto Iconic and Kai, but Kai gets roots out Rico and Rico's forced to retreat. Much action going on right now as Aggression's going towards Miki, pulls Miki into it, but that might not be the play. But hold well on, Miki's turning the Aggression back on to uh, Aggression. He drops on HP, but Aggression is able to gain his armor as first blood. Quick draw and Iconic take a stance onto Rico as Rico falls and is the first one of the match. War Cyclone there by himself. He's dropped down to half HP. Iconic and Kai are looking to do something to him, but he just has to back off to his tower and he is getting support from his minions. Well, that was going on. Looks like uh, Clint the top lane was able to take out Miki and gain that first blood gold for a high on Northern. Oh, and you taking a gold lead at the moment. And a two kill lead. I didn't even recognize that. I'm guessing Miyuki must have dropped to aggression. Relic and I, Spoopy, are engaging with each other, but not too aggressively at this moment. They're more so taking care of the minions at this moment, but as we will see, they are starting to target one another. Married up, trying to close the gap on the gold lead at the moment. Even with their farm. Even though Ohio Northern is ahead at this moment with their gold and their kills, they are not far ahead enough to play too aggressively as the match can swing in either direction at this point. But Aggression and Yuki are still engaging with each other, but we could see Aggression or Muki, Yuki make the first move. It is unsure of which one is going to be. It seems like they are waiting to see what the other is going to do. 
I can't make him Kai. I'm pushing up, trying to deny War Cyclone and Enrico's space. And it looks as though they're going to take a stance onto War Cyclone and Enrico, but they both end up retreating as aggression going in onto Miki, but both team, both going backing off. They're just poking at one another at this moment. Now, Owen Yu still has a substantial right, gold lead. Gretchen made the first move against Muki, and then we have So, to Owen Yu is going five. to take the first Drake of the match. Brimstone tried to come in to stop it, but there's nothing he could have done in all 1v6. Brimstone getting support from his team as Warsaw is going to stun out and will go down to Kai. Kai takes him out, but Brimstone does stun out. Quick draw, quick draw goes down to Relic. Relic still is iconic. It looks like Mar Marietta is going to turn into a 3v1 onto Ice Lobby, but that's not good for Marietta as Brimstone gets rid of it and they get turned on into a 4v2. Marietta thought it was going to be a 3 on 1 as Relic's getting chased by Aggression and I saw Ice Sp Spoopy. Correction, Marietta lo was looking to take, to win that fight as they were chasing Ice Spoopy into a 3 on 1, but Owen Yu just came and backed up their players and next thing you know, Marietta was in a 4v2. Oh no, this is not good, but he's able to flash out. Wars like Sun is just trying to get gold. He wasn't able to, like he was able to flash. So, uh, with Azir, he has a way where he can summon one of his teams, he can dash into it. So it's kind of like a pseudo flash that allows him to uh, skip over terrain. But his flash is still intact. We're second in Rico, trying to take down the first tower of the match, but Kai is there to push them back and they have to retreat as Aggression is looking to take a stance on the Miki here. He has the support from his minions to do it. Miki trying to back off to his tower so that Aggression cannot push onto him. Oh no, this is not a good spot for Relic like in a 2v1 scenario with Ice Spot being iconic. These guys are so he's so they're gonna back away. Although it looks like Seth's gonna roam up to the top lane, they tried to to help aggression. Oh no, Brimstone and Israeli coming with the sneak attack onto Ice Poppy. He has to flash out. got a hold on Miki, but it looks like it did not. Russian tries again and tries to reel in Miki, but it is not working as Miki is getting the lead as they have their minions behind them. Oh no, this is not looking good for oh, Relic. Really? I see Cup finds himself in a three almost scenario with no teammates to back him up. And oh, and you is just ruthless. They wanted to kill Relic. And they did that. They know that if they can shut down Relic, the, the main threat's gonna be War Cyclone. So it looks like it's gonna be up to Cyclone to be able to carry the team if they want a chance to win the game. Sure. Looks like War Cyclone is getting backed by Comic, but go back them up. And Aggression takes on Mookie again. It looks like Mookie is trying to get away. However, Aggression ended up not going in for the kill. Aggression goes back down, picking out the minions and bombing the way. He 
you could see aggression going in for the blue turret anytime now, I believe, if they can take out Mewtwo. play more defensively, but they are going in now against I Spoopy. Really good setup by uh I Swappy there to try and uh force Relic out. So Rico's gonna pump his ult and Marietta wants to take a fight in here and they shut down two members of ONU as they chase down Good job, War Cycle popping his ult too. They're chasing down Iconic. Marietta wins, ends up winning the 3v2 that they plan on taking with uh, War Cycle getting a double kill within that fight. Now, are they gonna push this aggression and take a tower or? No, it looks like they want to take the Drake. Looks like Miyuki and Brimstone Bro. May, nope. Just gonna clear up this. Oh, no, they're my Oh, nope, they are going in for the Drake. Brimstone is low HP, so he is going to rely on the rest of his team in order to take out this Drake. That fight earlier is exactly what they needed. They were down 3k gold 10 minutes in the game, and now they've closed the gap by just a little under 1,000. So if, if Cyclones can get a couple more kills like that, we'll be right back into this. Yeah, and the kill lead isn't very, very drastic, but however, Aggression is looking to take down the first tower of the game. As Kai is pushing into War Cyclone, but War Cyclone jumps in as Kai just roots him out and he's getting support from Iconic. This is not good for War Cyclone. This War Cyclone does have a sliver of HP and Kai decides to ult him but misses. Her team has destroyed the first turret of the game. And it looks like Iconic and Kai want to take this tower and Aggression also. So ended up taking the tower, like I said, and this is not a good spot for Miki right now, but he is able to take out on the Rift Herald. Okay, what's this? What's going to be the big challenge is that aggression is up over 30 CS compared to Yuki. So, that's going to be very strong uh, later in the fight. So, when you, so, that's going to be a challenge for Marietta. So, right now, mid lane looks pretty even on CS and gold. Uh, we see Cyclone does have a little bit of a lead over uh, Kai, but not by much. So that Kled, I think, is going to be the big X factor in this game. So Mary is going to have to make sure that he gets shut down. Like Kai and Conic are trying to take down the minions. We got Cliff Draw going in for another break. Oh no, this is not good for Ice Poppy as Rico comes in to support him. Hooks Ice Poppy in, and there's three members of Marietta College here to kill Ice Poppy, but. Looks like Quickjaw comes in to try and support his teammate along with Aggression and they're chasing down Relic. Relic drops to Aggression and now the fight is turned onto Marietta as Rico and Brimstone have to leave and War Cyclone comes in to support but all the members of ONU are there to take down Marietta as Rico and Rodriguez will end up falling and they're going to chase down Brimstone and War Cyclone as Brimstone is dropped down to half HP as War Cyclone goes in with his ult and drops all ONU down to half HP, but they're able to properly punish him. This is a chance for ONU. They could take that tower, but they're deciding not to. Well, they have to wait for the minion wave to come in before they go after it. They're not going to take third hit. Okay, what was a one for one turned into uh, basically, what was that? I think a three for one. That turned into a three on two. A three on one turned into a three on two, which turned into a five on three. Anya will be capturing the Rift Herald here. Now, how are they gonna use that? That's the question. Well, my guess is they're gonna try. To, so right now they have the top lane opened up. 
and they took a little couple hits onto the bot lane, but they want to get that mid lane open up. If you can get the mid tower down, that really opens up the map and gives you options. So I would expect them to try to find an opportunity to put that mid lane. Looks like Muki is going to succeed in taking a tower unless Foppy gets there just in time to prevent him from getting it. going in for another great kill. Rick's not up yet, so I don't think it's going to be the Drake. They're just playing the, the jungle, carrying bulls and groms and so forth. But the drone Drake is going to be there for 35 seconds, so uh, Ohio Northern is trying to clear out the area and get set up for a fight in the Dragon. And there is going to have to start converging over there too, so I would expect a team fight within the next 25 seconds. Yeah, whoever gets this Drake buff definitely will turn the tide of the, uh, the match until that Baron can spawn, but Marietta definitely is able, will be able to capitalize on that. Both teams are looking to take this Drake. Uh, it looks as though ONU might be setting up better as they're denying Marietta from even getting in to go on the Drake. But Marietta finds a way in as Rico goes in with the hook, but gets stunned out by aggression. Rico's going to end up getting support from his team as Brimstone and Miki are there to support, but Brimstone is jumping into the quarter of HP as aggression does end up going down. This is chaos. Quick draw is going to jump down to Marietta as well. And now it's just I Spoppy to defend the Drake, but Kai's there to help them out, and all the members of Marietta College are low HP, but War Cyclone is just dominating everyone, and Marietta College should succeed in taking the Drake. An ace coming out from War Cyclone in that fight. That was just a great play there by Cyclone to be able to pop, uh, pick off a uh, quick draw and very early on, and they, the Highland Northern was not able to get on them. They focused a lot on trying to shut down uh, Rico and Relic, but Cyclone was able to stay behind the lines to be able to do his damage. And we saw he was able to pop off his oh, pop off that damage, and it's just insane what he's been able to do. Well, it looks as though Marietta is turning the tide of this game as they are now taking control of the mid lane and have opened up with that first tower kill in the mid lane and their first tower kill of the map. Yeah, now it's not over yet. I mean, they, they've closed the gold gap. They're still down by about 1,200 gold, and that clan is still going to be a big threat, having a pretty much a 50 uh, CS over Yuki. But we do, but we do see the big differences in the bot lane with Cyclone having two kills over Senna. Their CS is pretty much is dead even. But as long as Cyclone can maintain his lead and keep his CS up, Marita has a shot. And they summon the Rift Herald. It looks as though Onyu does want to take this mid lane tower in response to Marietta taking their mid lane tower. But Brimstone goes in with his ult and drops Iconic down to about a quarter of HP and it succeeds. Railway getting a clean up kill as Marietta will take down the uh, Rift Herald. And now Baron is spawning in 50 seconds. So I would presume that Marietta is going to be slowly pushing over into the jungle. I, they could take down aggression here as Brimstone goes in onto him. I think that Marietta is going to cut him off in the jungle. At least that's the plan. But he might succeed in getting out. But War Cyclone has better plans for him. And so does Brimstone. As Brimstone pulls him in. That is bad for aggression. As he sees five Marietta players just chasing him down. 30 seconds remaining until Baron spawns. So I'm guessing Marietta College is going to be taking a stance and controlling this jungle lane. They want to take this Baron. I don't know if they'll actually go for it yet. Most teams don't try to go for Baron right at the 20 minute mark unless they're substantial in the lead. And the fact that Baron is still behind, they're probably not gonna have enough damage to actually try to take out the Baron. Uh, a, a safer strat would be if they can take out a Highlander's jungler, then that removes the 50-50 smite battle between the junglers. 
So they're going to be looking to get a pick off a of quick draw, and depending on how the rest of that fight goes, then they can start the Baron. But at least for now, they want to have vision control over there, so that way if a Highland Warrior does try to go for the Baron, Marietta will be aware of it. Bobby might be able to succeed in taking down a turret, and he does, and just gets out. Because he got what he came for, and now he's leaving. Both teams are neck and neck with one another right now. Even though Merida is up 12 to 11, there is still a good chance that Ohio Northern can take this if they just completely coalesce and play as they were at the beginning of the game. Yeah, I mean, technically, Ohio Northern is still in the lead. Uh, the goal count is more important than the number of kills. So the kills are great and all, but the, the goal difference is really what we want to see. And it looks like a high northern is ahead by about 1,700 gold, which at 21 minutes is not a huge difference. So it's somewhat even, but the next team fight could definitely turn it high one way or the other. So Marion has to play it safe. They don't want to get picked off. Uh, they have to look for the right opportunity to take out one of the high northern so that way they can go for that baron. But that gold, the, the difference in the gold is really what's going to be the, the factor of each thing. Looks as though Mao and Yu is split between jungle and mid lane. So they are going to go and just co co join with one another. Yeah, Mary looks like they're going to reset, go back and buy a couple items. Because uh, we see Infernal Drake's going to be up in 48 seconds. So I would expect another team fight over by the Infernal Drake like we saw earlier. Hopefully with the same outcome. Yeah, I think uh, one of these teams is going to take control over this Drake. As you can see that uh, Owen Yu only has one Drake buff at the minute and Marietta has two. So if Owen Yu can capture this Drake buff, then they could turn the battle into a fight for the Baron next. But I think Marietta knows this, but Aggression goes in with his ult and goes onto Relic and Warsack 1, but they get caught out. Warsack 1 goes down to Aggression, and uh, Rico is just caught in the middle of four players. Ults are flying left and right. Spoppy pops out his ult and is just annihilating the rest of Marietta College. I don't think that they're going to push Baron. They're too low HP. No, they're going to go straight for it. They got, they got their jungler down. They got three down with Marietta, so that's the opportunity to go for the Baron. They did exactly what they need to do to win the fight. They took out Cyclone first. They put in the charge, back did his bounce, and they went all in to the back line to try to take out Cyclone with all the damage. So if I see down, Marietta has no damage left to win the fight. Aggression's ult there was just, I mean, perfect for his name. Like, he, he popped his ult and chased Relic and War Cyclone. And then the rest of the team just came in and collapsed and Aggression takes down War Cyclone and then that's just the team fight. And ONU will succeed in capturing their next Drake buff as well. So ONU is set up great right now as they have both their Drake buffs, a Baron buff, and a spontaneous gold lead. Oh no, this could, uh, I think they're just gonna walk past each other. Neither one of them wants to take the fight there. Firmstone joining up with his team as Warcyclone and Rico. Where are they headed though? That's the plan. Owen is probably gonna rotate around because right now the mid inner tower is no the, the inner towers are still up so they're gonna be looking to try to take out inner tower. We see the Baron buff push in the mid lane, but they're gonna try to take that out first. So we do see Kled split pushing over the top lane, so they're gonna try to take out two turrets at the same time. This is this is a very standard split push approach. You got four people in one in the mid lane, you got one person here on the top for the um, the, the bot lane. So Kled right now is very far ahead. So he's going to continue pushing in the, the bot lane because he knows he can take that power. 
This is about to be a massive team fight in the mid lane here. I don't think this is going to go in favor of Owen Yu because Warcyclone is leveled up and has a lot of gold in his hands. The, the Samir could come into play here and that could be, it's, it could be the difference turner in the team fight that we were about to see go down as both teams are just poking at each other. As Aggression and uh, Nikki are just doing their own thing. As Aggression will take down that turret and I guess Owen Yu is going to take this time to go in on Marietta's mid lane turret but this is not good for Marietta at the moment as there are four, five ON, four, correction, ONU players going in as they're going to try and take down the inhibitor tower. But Aggression joins up in with them as it is, will be a 5 on 5 team fight here, folks. You see the uh, Valpai ult coming out, it's going to catch anyone, and most of my ults looped up, but I don't think there's any follow up. So that was enough to at least push them away, but it's not, we're not going to see any team fights just yet. I think that I think Owen Yu is scared of the Samira at the phone, at the moment. Oh no! Quick draw is gonna get stunned by Brimstone. It might get punished, but he is able to leap out just in time, as he does get support from his teammates. Not gonna let you do that. Force him to retreat. We are about 27 and a half minutes in the game. A hand order is still up by a substantial lead. It's al almost uh, 7,000 gold difference, which is uh, pretty substantial. Although we are going to see uh, possibly a play getting caught, but even though uh, Brimstone used the Cataclysm, Kled actually used the Splash to get away, so they're not going to be able to trap him. He'll just back away. And the rest of the time, we're just converging over near the... Uh, red side jungle so they're they're back over there trying to put some vision down trying to clear camp denying marietta any cs to try to come back uh into it and they're actually just kind of waiting around to see uh if they're and marietta was able to spot it out and that's going to force around with the back off just a little bit but marietta knows where they're at and we're probably going to see another team fight team to play because the program is going to be up in less than 40 seconds yeah, one minute remaining until another Baron spawns too, so... Almost 30 minutes into this match. This is a good head-to-head -head so far, folks. Oh no, this might not be good for Marietta to defend themselves in a 3-on-3 three three fight with Brimstone. Has, I, has to use his Fortify, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's a great move there, great defensive play, because they were looking to try to engage onto it, and it just helps with disengaging. Earl Drake's going to get to three seconds, so there. Mary is looking for a pick, but so is a high in order. They may start up the Infernal Drake. Brimstone, drop down to half HP, but this could be the this could be what Owen Yu needs, but Owen Yu, they're not going to take the fight. They're going to go take the Drake. Yeah, Mary has to retreat. They're already less than half health, but she's not going to take the Drake, so it's just a three turn break for a high in order. I think Owen Yu wasn't necessarily looking to get a pick there. Like, yes, they were looking to punish one of the Marietta players, but they were just looking to deny them space to get in onto the Drake. As the Drake is one in, and they just pushed Marietta back. And now they're looking to take a sense onto the Baron. But I don't think they're going to take it out just yet, as Marietta is chasing in on them. They okay, were going to start up, but now they're just going to deny vision. So that's, that's all they're going to do now. They may... They're hovering around, but I don't think we're going to see a team fight there just yet. They, they knew it was too early to try to uh, force something. No one was dead from their side. If they clicked off like the jungler, then they would go straight for the Baron, but there's no need to do it. Now we see Mary to go in, try to reestablish some vision, take the stubble crab, get some wards down, and deny some wards. Baron vision is crucial at this point in the game. You take a Baron buff, and that might be enough to get you at least an inhibitor, if not the game. Marietta does need to take this Baron buff if they want to get back into this game. It is a close game, but Owen Yu 
is looking like they have the lead in this matchup right now, but... Oh, and you're setting up around the Baron now, just taking out Marietta's setups. It's a little of a cat and mouse game with physical damage around Baron. Usually, you put down a ward, ward gets destroyed. You put down a ward, and then it gets destroyed, and you just keep blitzing and repeating until someone takes the Baron. Second, and nice little here. We see coming out onto and to set. caught in the middle of three of ONU's players. This after UC's escape ability. But aggression gets the aggression turned on to him as he gets five Marietta players in the middle of him. However, Sloppy does end up taking down, I believe that was Brimstone. As Yuki is dropped down to half HP as well. And it looks like they are deciding to chase. Rico and Warcycle in here. They spotted out Warcycle and Relic, and those are their prime targets. Those are the players they want to kill, but they just can't push. Yeah, there's a one for one fight. Mary had to back off. The minions were moving into uh, higher than order's favor, but they had to back away because they didn't want the extra damage from the minions. Um, but still, I mean, all these things here, just having it to be a one for one trade is nice, and just getting a shutdown onto Lead also helps. A nice ult there by Relic. Not going to be really any follow-up, but at least they got the Kai about half health, so they may be looking to try to find an engage, and it's actually going to force the Highland Warden to retreat. Or at least for a little bit. Still 7,000 gold difference. So the good news is uh, High Nerva has not been able to extend their lead, but it's still 7,000 uh, gold difference. CS up because that's how they're going to get back into this game and maybe looking for a pick onto a high order but uh, with the Infernal Drake coming up in 50 seconds we're going to really see something going on here. Maria has to test this Drake. A high order already has two Infernal Drakes and that's going to be a substantial amount of damage. If they get a third they're going to be doing here I say it tons of damage. so they have to be able to contest this fight so they got to make sure they don't get pushed off. What happened last time was uh, Ice Boopy was able to use his uh, his minions to be able to pull down Marietta so they couldn't contest, and I would expect him to try to do something similar. Hey, <laughs> Marietta looking like a frontline defense in the jungle entry, but ONU is not scared, but they should be as Marietta is popping out, and Spoopy ends up taking down one of Marietta's players, but two of Marietta's players actually. But wait, this is turning on a Marietta, but no, Marietta can clean this up. There's no way. As that fight was going both ways, back and forth, as it was a th I think all members of Ohio Northern dropping, and only two from Marietta dropping, but Aggression wanted to take someone with him, but he just couldn't, as Relic just wipes the floor with everyone. And that just came down to Cyclone, so, I mean, Ohio Northern had the fight early on, but Cyclone, but they didn't touch Cyclone early on, able to get the triple kill, he does end up going down, but it was just enough so that Relic and Rico were able to finish off play. And now they're able to secure that Infernal Drake. This is exactly what Mary and needs. They're still behind by a considerable amount, but at least they got the Infernal Drake, so it's a bit more even. I have a feeling this is going to be a long match, ladies and gentlemen. The good news, though, is uh, from my understanding, I was reading the chat, so I'm going to have to give uh, kudos to our uh, alumnus. Uh, MC Cowboy, he's gonna love that I'm giving him a shout out in Twitch chat, so I'm gonna see in three minutes later that uh, talked about how uh, Cyclone's character does scale pretty well. 
So if Merida can at least try to maintain, then Severe will be able to scale very well in the late game, and that might be what Merida needs to be able to take this game. One of these teams is well, has to be looking to get a pick on the other as I think Onyu might be looking for the same play, just picking up on a Marietta and then going in on the Baron, but Marietta's just rotating the Baron right now. Oh and you notices that and is trying to stop them. I think one of ONU's members actually triggered the Baron. Marietta was not ready for that. No, it's a very common trick. Just whenever you're trying to clear out vision, the other team will start the Baron, so that's just a little extra damage onto the other team. But of course, Mary's gonna back off. They're not gonna start the game. That's way too risky right now. So we might see a fight in the mid lane before, and whoever comes out on top would be the person who's going to take the Baron. The thing that also is going to help Marietta is they only have two towers down. If they're able to get more towers, that's free gold that can help close the gap. But the problem is Marietta has not had an opportunity to clear out those remaining towers. Uh, Aggression has just been able to split push on both lanes to try to give them the power to lead. But right now, Marietta only... They don't even have the top outer tower down yet. They just haven't had a chance to really get up there. And we saw a possible behavior there by Zach, but... Kai and Aggression going in with both of their ults. This is exactly what we saw last time. It's Marietta well prepared for a thing. Looks like so they are. Aggression and Kai go down the low HP, and it looks like Kai is able to successfully get out. And Kai slains Brimstone down, but Brim Motorcycle gets a question, a good one for one trade. And sh oh, this is not good. It's the same thing we saw last time Baron was up. However, uh, oh, and you does not have the members to chase onto the Baron right now. So it looks like they're just going to take down Marida's mid lane inhibitor tower. But that's the same thing we saw last time. Aggression going in with his ult first, chasing down War Relic and Warcycle. And then... High pops his old two, and they end up taking down Brimstone. They get the first pick, and yeah. then so they were winning the team fight until Cyclone died. That really came down to it. If Cyclone was able to stay alive a little bit longer, they would have won it. But as soon as Cyclone, because right now Cyclone is 13 5. And oh, this isn't good. This isn't good. Yeah, they're looking to finish the game already. The Rayleigh's dropping into half HP. This is good. Kai's just going to destroy the inhibitor, and they didn't even need the Baron. Yeah, because they yeah they took out four. There's only Rayleigh was the only one that was left, so. At that late in the game, all they needed to do was just take, just push the lane because the respawn timers at 37 minutes is just too long that Marietta was not going to be able to respawn in time. And with that, uh, Ohio Northern will take game one. This is a best of three. Uh, so we're going to take a couple minutes to get things set up in the lobby. So we'll be back in just a few minutes.
All right, and welcome back. We already have Pro Draft uh, underway here, so let me go ahead and get that uh, set up here. We're already seeing bands. Uh, Mary is banning out the Arizona. They decided to ban out the set this time, so they did not want uh, support set, and they did not like the Azir either, so they're going to take it out. Ohio Northern is going to keep the same bands from they had before. Well, actually, the Fizz and Echo, but this time they're taking out Syndra in the first set of bands. Marietta is going to go straight with that Samira. It worked well for Cyclone, so they're going to keep that. And it looks like Ohio Northern is going to keep with their Senna because they liked how that turned out too. Yeah, we'll see if ONU decides to run the Zach again in this game. It seemed to have done so. It seemed to have done them well last time. Uh, they were able to get early picks off, but Marietta played really well around their Nautilus. Yeah, they do see the dude pick out the uh They the do Zach. pick the Zach. Now, this is a 1-0 up against ONU in this best of three series, so this is match point right now, if I'm correct, yeah, for ONU. Yeah, it is best of three, so if Ohio takes this, then that's it. But if Marietta takes it, we will go to a game three. And it looks like Mary's going to keep the Nautilus. Rico does like that, uh, so he will keep it. Now we'll see what Mary decides to go with next. It looks like it's going to be a similar comp as before with the Jarvan. We'll see. if Mary might try to go with the same composition as last time. Uh, it was just a matter of executing uh, some of the team fights. They have to make sure they protect the Samira. Um because the, the times that Marietta won their fights, it was because Cyclone was able to stay up. If a Highland Northern is able to dive that back line and take out the Samira, then it's going to be GG. And actually, we're seeing a Highland Northern going with the Braum, and they're going to use that to, to try to counter Samira because she is kind of like a Katarina except an ADC. So having that shield to block those ultis uh, could be a huge factor for a Highland Northern. And we do see the Orn Band again denying that from Yuki. We'll see how Marietta is going to respond to this, but. Yeah, they're looking to try to do a full-on counter onto Samira. Looks like Marina may still go ahead and ban out the Vladimir. See if Aha Northern... So yeah, they're going to take out the Shen. They don't... Yeah, they're trying to ban out Muki, trying to force her onto the Maokai. And Mary's going to take out the Kled. They do not want... Well, they haven't confirmed it yet. Now they've confirmed it. So yeah, it's possible that Mary will go with the exact same comp as they did in Game 1. Now we're actually going to see a Camille in the top lane. So that's a, another a very mobile champion uh, against the Maokai. But I think Mary's going to have to lock in the Maokai. I'm curious... Owen, you banned Syndra from Marietta, but Marietta didn't ban Syndra from ONU. Do you think we're going to see a Syndra pick come out from ONU in this Syndra's last one? Syndra's banned. Yeah, but it only works for per team, doesn't it? No, it, it, no one can use it. So the way bans work here is when a champion's banned, neither side can use it. Huh. And actually, they go, Marietta goes with the Malphi instead of the, the Malkai. Which actually might be a good good pick because that's a very strong engage, uh, charging in and doing a, a big knock up. So if they can do like a, a Jarvan alt to trap everyone in, and then Malphite goes in, knocks him up, and then bringing back the Oriana uh, with her ulti, you got a nice wombo combo there with those champions. That could be a, a pretty solid composition uh, for the pioneers. Now we'll see what that last, uh, the mid lane will be. Azir being banned, I'll have to pick something else. And it looks like they're going to go with the Vigar. But not as mobile, but can definitely scale well. If they're looking at a possible, uh, another long game, then you would want a, uh, a Vigar that can scale just like Samira can scale. It looks like everyone's saying they're ready, so now we're just going to wait for Champion Select to officially start on the client. Both sides said they were ready. Okay, 
both sides said they were ready, so I think Ohio Northern has, yeah, they have the party leaders, so we're just waiting for them to hit the start button. Definitely a very back and forth match. I think either team can come out on top. Uh, maybe they just gotta play a little bit differently than how they were last time. Uh, again, they gotta capital it, or remember what happened last time. So as we saw there in the last fight, Aggression and Kai like did the same play they did last time, where Aggression pops his ult, chases in on Relic and War Cyclone, and then. That leaves that le one Marietta member gets pulled in by the Zac, and then it's a four v one on one that one Marietta member, and O and U ends up getting the first pick. Right. The, the strategy was have Z yeah charge with the the clad, and then have Zac bounce in behind in the back line, because the the objective was to take out War Cyclone. That was the goal. Take take out the source of damage, and you win the fight. Yeah, I can tell that they were definitely. Never pick a fight you can't win. They're definitely afraid of that Samira. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's a little concerning with Meredith's comp is they have a really good engage offensive comp, um, and we do have tanks. We do have a couple of front liners, but they gotta have to make sure they deny Zach the opportunity to get in the back lines because if they get into the back line and take out Samira, that's it. So we'll see what happens. But if Maria can get the engages, because they have like multiple opportunities to engage onto the Northern side. So if they can take out the Vigar, if they can take out the, uh, let's see, yeah, they take out the Senna, then they can turn around too. I'm absolutely livid. So I go. Now we're just waiting for him to finish up the uh, yeah, all the selections. So just gotta wait for the the loadouts. We gotta wait for spectator delay yeah, as well. So it's gonna be another like four minutes before we can get this match underway. Yeah. So let's let's take a minute to talk about your Overwatch match. Since we didn't really have time to do an interview oh. right afterwards because we had to get straight into the league game. Let's talk a little like give a small interview about uh, your Overwatch game from earlier. So It'd be good if I actually had some questions in mind with it. So what was your, before the game even started, what was your game plan? What was the strategy on trying to, to win the game? Um, uh, focus, focus a certain pick. Like, so, uh, they, they, we knew that they had one really strong TPS player. So if we could take him out first, then we can most likely win the next fight. And we knew that they were going to run, like, what comp they're going to run almost the entire time, like with the Sim. Uh, and how they always resorted to things like Simtorb, like on defense and stuff like that. So we were just well preparing our attacks mainly to take like to deal with the Sim in the Torb. So mainly we were mainly trying to play around the Sim extra, which I think we did a really good job. I bubbled my Ryan in so that uh, he could push up, take space, and then I take out all the turrets, so okay. we could win. Okay, yeah, I mean it was a uh, for the most part pretty well executed. Uh, I did notice at least in a couple of those maps, like you're doing well, but and it would seem like like a little mistake here or a little mistake there made the difference in giving Muskingo a chance to actually uh, take the map. Like I think I remember on Hanamura, if I remember correctly, 
Like you had less than 30 seconds and they had a, uh, uh, talk about that one, that's me think here. Yeah, so that team fight right before they took the first point on Hanamura, what do you think went wrong there? Um, I don't remember that team fight too well, but I think it was just uh, Muskingum like got an early pick off, and they were able to capitalize on that really well. Okay, I think that that's that had in my head. That's most likely what happened. Okay, all right. So let's. So you're in game three, and you've already you're at two zero right now. So you're just one game away from winning your first overmatch overwatch match for the season mm -hmm. what's going through everyone's minds um everyone is just uh keeping the motivation the momentum we bringing it into the next game okay. me personally i wanted to play dps but um my coach wouldn't let me okay but uh no we were all we were all pretty hyped keeping the momentum that's just that was the main goal keep that keep the focus and keep the momentum okay so say like how do you how do you make sure, because like sometimes there is that pressure. It's like, okay, we're just one game away, or we're one round away. We're this close. I definitely think, could what? feel uh, it from some of my, my players, though. Yes, like, so. they, some, like, some mistakes that happened like weren't happening before, and uh, I, I'm guessing it was the nerves of we're one map away. Like, let's get it done. Like, okay. me personally, I've always I've been in that situation a million times, so I'm, able, I'm always calm and level-headed. So what I tried to do was just... Uh, Tell everyone like to breathe after they made a mistake, and like we have ults coming on, like we'll win this next fight, and that's what we ended up doing. Okay. All right. Now, if we look at the schedule, so actually, your next match is not next Saturday. I mean, there is a match next Saturday, but Monday. your next match is actually on Monday when you'll be playing up against Shawnee State University in the NACE Overwatch competition. So, what are your thoughts about that matchup? Uh, I have no. I haven't done any scouting or anything. Uh, I hope it's going to be a good game, just like today. Uh, we're not going to have much practice besides our practice tomorrow. Uh, so I'm just looking to for my teammates to keep a level head and take the momentum from this match going into the next one. Okay. All right. Well, we wish you all the, the best of luck. So, yeah, as we're getting loaded up, we kind of took it, it, enough of the clock for the, the game to actually load. So... Uh, we have several matches going this week. I mean, also, of course, tonight we have a Rainbow Six match going against Ca uh, Cassiopeia University. It's, uh, never remember Casanova. Right. It's not Casanova. Casanova. I, uh, Casanova. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's not Casanova. I know that for sure. But, um, yeah, so that will be at 8.30 uh, tonight. And then Monday, Overwatch will play against Shawnee State University. And then Tuesday, our Rocket League team will be playing against uh, Manchester and Lord. So please be sure... Uh, to come back for that but right now we're in game two of marietta versus ohio northern max Mar point for onu yep marietta has st is stuck with the blue side and ohio northern will be on the red side looks like we're gonna see a standard line of scrimmage uh no one trying to do any invades no one trying to do any quick picks although i think there's a slight problem i think brimstone forgot to buy his jungle item uh oh yeah, that that's an oof. Oh no, this and he's good. just realized it. He was like, "Oh wait, I forgot to buy my stuff. I'll be right back, guys. Don't wait, don't start without me." Hey, it looks like me when I come out of spawn on Overwatch. Sometimes I just bought out. Yep, there we go. Now he now he buys these items. Just this hard so press W out of spawn. At least he caught it now and not when it was like in the middle of a fight or anything. He's like, "Oh, where's my items? Oops." True. Oh, maybe maybe Burstone's nervous a bit. No. I mean, it's definitely possible. I mean, people have made mistakes before. I mean, in this one, I mean, trust me, I've made far more mistakes on Jarvan than he's ever had. I made more mistakes yesterday in the one game that I played as Jarvan than he has his entire career, in Brimstone's entire career. I don't uh, want to talk about that game yesterday. It was bad. I make a lot of mistakes too sometimes. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. And it also happens to the worst of us, like me. For real. You weren't supposed to agree with that. I I mean, everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> yep. It's the better people punish those mistakes, mm -hmm. and then it's up to you to realize that you made a mistake and learn from it. Yep.
Okay. Let's see here. Tiger, if you actually want to get a chair and you want to bring it over, you can. Okay, still very early in the game. We're not going to see a whole lot going on. A little bit of trading back and forth. Neil getting a little bit of damage on Malphite and then backing away. We'll just rotate around here. There we go. Oh, no. I'm in the middle. Yep. How does it feel? Six consoles. <laughs> yeah, we do see a little bit of damage going to mid lane. Like a, Although, uh, Vigar was able to put his gate down. Stun Brimstone to prevent a, uh, a gank attempt. Still some damage trading. Both teams just working on their farm at this point. Looks like we saw the last one. We're about to be five minutes in and no picks yet. Just yet. Which is uh, standard. But Miki does drop half HP to aggression. But they both are half HP. Poking at one another. But we do see Brimstone nearby. And their caution pings are coming out. So maybe looking at a possible gank attempt. In fact we do see Brimstone heading up there. But it doesn't look like much is going to come out. Yeah, aggression puts down the ward, and that just prevents Rimstone from being able to do anything. Same pigs coming out. I mean, well, how Northern did get a deep ward into Marietta's Red Jungle, so they're able to spot out where Brimstone is, and that's going to give Aggression the green light to push forward because he knows that there's not going to be a jungler anywhere by to try to gank him. And we're seeing Yuki's getting very low, so she's going to have to retreat. Or at least back away to her tower. You know, may see a tent here in the bot lane. Trying to see you get a push on. Looks as though Brimstone's coming into support, but Quickshot's also there to support. As Quickshot drops down to half HP through Rico Rodriguez, but Brimstone also drops down to half HP and is the first kill in this match. And Iconic and Quickshot and Kai want to chase down Warcycle and they want to kill him. Rico Rodriguez trying to protect his uh, AD carry, but Quickshot is in there with the Zach, pulls him into the team, and he drops down to 1 HP. Warcycle barely flashes out as Conic drops down to 1 HP. They do end up, I believe. I believe, I don't know how uh, Quickshaw got out of that fight. Well, now well, he's dead. Now he's gone. Yeah, his passive has, doesn't turn into slime. Oh, and we're seeing Oh, really? Like, what the flank? This could be huge. Oh. And Brom actually flashes away. He but... drops on the one. He's people but Raelic says no. And Rico, Rico and Warcycle like just backing Kai into a corner. Their ruthlessness from Marietta College right now. That was so unexpected. Raelic just coming out of nowhere. It's not too unexpected. I mean, both Kai and Iconic were very low in health. So, Raelic wanted to burn, use his teleport to get down there and try to pick them off when they were alone. Oh, that's unlucky. okay. That, that, that's okay. It's not. That's just unlucky. Yeah, but at least it's not. Uh oh. Uh oh. And they oh see no, it. Aggression and Ice Poppy coming in to clean up. Raelic. Raelic goes down. And aggression. Rico, this is not where you want to be. I was not. I definitely was not expecting that. They're looking for a. Yeah, so high on the northern side. You know what? You teleport in to finish us off. We're going to do the same thing. And that's going to give him a free Ocean Drake. Both teams coming in with the flanks and the unexpected turn of events on team fights. This is definitely going to be one to, one to watch, ladies and gentlemen. And what, also the reason why they're able to do that was Miyuki had to burn her teleport to get back into lane. So High Northern knew that that teleport was down so they could easily turn that into a 2v2 or a 3v2. Well, basically, it was a 3v2 just to finish off the rest of Marietta. The good news with that though, that does give Miyuki a chance to try to catch up a little bit on CS so she's not as far behind as she was earlier, but it's still about 10 to 11 CS difference. And even Cyclone's actually down on CS compared to Senna. Now, do you think, you, you have mentioned that Samira is a new character. 
Do you think Marietta should be running that character in this match today? Cyclo feels very comfortable with it. And history has shown that when a new uh, champion comes out, they're very overpowered. So if you can figure out how the champion works pretty early on, then you definitely want to use it. In Samir's case, he works a lot like uh, uh, Katarina in the mid lane, where whenever she gets a kill with the ult, it basically resets. At least that's my understanding. I, I'm sure someone in the chat's going to tell me, you're wrong! But it seems like it's a lot like a Katarina ult. Actually, it's probably not. I, have to, I need to look it up. You know, I'm just going to look it up just to make sure that I'm giving correct information. I don't want to say a bunch of wrong things. I'm sure chat will correct me in a few minutes. Uh, that's right. He doesn't want to pull a move like me. But the gold move is saying that kills counted more than gold. Which I found to be not the case. Well, getting kills lead to gold. Yes. So, as you can see in major team fights, if all ONU wins a 4v3 against Mount Union, or Marietta College, correction, uh, and ONU loses no players, then you will see ONU would trump in a dramatic uh, gold lead. Okay, so her Inferno, I mean, it works like Katarina's ult. It doesn't reset when there's a kill, but that's exactly the same thing as uh, Katarina's ult. But it basically attacks. Uh, a lot of innings around here 10 times over duration. It does physical damage, lifesteal, and can critically strike. This only works whenever, like, her system is like a, a grade system where she has to keep rotating her abilities to increase her grade from E to S. Mm -hmm. So once she's at S rank, she can use her ulti, which can do a lot of damage. Oh no, Relic's looking to drop yeah, down Quickdraw, but Quickdraw is also taking damage from the Rift Herald, but Quickdraw is able to kill the Rift Herald, and Ice Whip comes in to support Quickdraw, and they take down Relic together. Yeah. I don't know what was going on there. I'm guessing Relic wanted to keep him from getting the, the Rift Herald, but Ice Whip was just like, nah, dude. It was a great effort by Relic to try to use the ulti, but uh, Zach was just able to bounce out of it, so the ult whipped, and then they were able to punish him for it. Oh, the hook coming in from Rico as he roots Iconic, but I... Kai is there to support him. Speaking of League of Legends, wasn't World supposed to start this weekend? Group stages have already started. They started the, uh, the, the play-ins. Yeah. Yeah, the play-ins have already started. I don't remember how they ended or if they're still going. I think they go throughout this week and next week. Yeah, I think the actual matches for the brackets start yeah. on October. The, the first weekend in October, I think. Yes, yeah, so that's next weekend. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, the past couple weeks have been the play-ins. I know, at least in the NA, Team Liquid won their first game. I don't know how they did after that. Uh, once again, chat will probably correct me in three minutes. But uh, we definitely would love to see NA do well in Worlds. Historically, they haven't. Uh, there's have been a lot of years where they can't even get out of the group stages, but... I'm definitely, uh, when it comes to NA, I think I'm going to be, like, putting my faith in Team Liquid. Uh, however, I hate to do this, but I have to be an EU fan, and I'm pulling for either G2 or Gen G in Worlds. Well, considering I mean, how well G2 did last year, I mean... They're, they have a favorable chance. A nice ult there by Raelic and a nice Cataclysm, but Savagra's got to flash out, but he has nothing left, so he, the shutdown's goal is going to go to Raelic. Darian needs that, so they're only down by 900 gold. However, uh, Quinchos gonna... coming in to clean up on Brimstone, and is there... Tries to pull uh, Raelic into his team as Iconic is there to try and help him receive the kill, but... Nice ult Nikki there. Comes... Uh, all of it is there to support Raelic as... And here comes Cyclone. Coming. Come on, finish off the Zach. There, there we go. Kiki, able to clean off quick draw as Warcycle does clean up the kill as Rico pulled him into the team. And Warcycle is just going to chase Iconic. Goes to W, drops down to the corner of HP himself and does end up going down to aggression. I guess that's good for a aggression. A nice hook there by Rico. Not, that so was a, a great hook. It's a four for one in favor of the Pioneers. Like, I. They're so much is going on. I mean. 
let's just talk about what just happened there. So it started off with Raylic popping the ult and getting into Vigar. And then Zach jumps in, trying to go into Raylic, finishes him off, and then a brilliant ult there by Yuki to charge the Zach. And I can't remember who was that. I think it was Camille. No, actually, no, it was Braum, because Braum popped the ult and it did catch Raylic. And then Yuki goes into charge to defend Raylic, gets them down, finishes off the Zach, and then War Cyclone comes in from behind and then just goes straight for Camille and, Cal and Kai. Popped his ult and did a bunch of damage. That was just a really great job by the Pioneers by staying. Uh, at first I thought, oh man, this is bad. But just really great execution. And then of course the hook by Rico at the end there to solidify that fourth kill. Wow, that was insane. Definitely. This match is going to go toe to toe as we just saw an entire team fight break out. And the gold and kill leads still aren't that dramatic from ONU. ONU is down, has like a bare, not even a gold lead. And Mayida College has a two kill lead. It's 13 minutes into this match and neither team has taken a tower. However, I think ONU is closing in on taking one if I'm correct. Yeah, another cloud because I'm on to Vigar. Oh, Double Bob, ult Bobby's gonna go down, Rayleigh's gonna punish him. They know that they have to deny the Vigar. He scales very well, and if we get into late game with a powered up Vigar, it's GG. So they have to prevent him from being able to scale. And Highland Northern's looking to try to claim first tower in the top lane. Yeah, Popping aggression the... using the Rift Herald to try and take that. Yeah, they know it's already very low, and actually, they no, they don't claim it yet. It's close, but not quite. But they're going to try to harass Muki to be able to get that first tower gold. But it's still only a 300 gold difference. A big difference from where we were in game one. And I'm seeing in chat, I've been corrected. So Team Liquid did win again. So I think the odds of them getting into the uh, the group stages was uh, very good. Yeah. I, I'm in a, I'm going to be honest. I don't trust TSM at all. I personally, I am a Cloud9 fan. Yes, I am upset that TSM beat them to get into Worlds. I think Cloud9 would have done better than TSM will in Worlds. But that's just my personal opinion, being a Cloud9 fan. And I'm uh, now I'm playing for Team Liquid. I just, it's not hate towards TSM, but I feel as though TSM is going to probably get eliminated. And we'll see. see things coming out it's... most of the things have settled down probably gonna get ready for the next dragon fight it's still like about a little less than two minutes away but right now everyone's gonna be just trying to push their their lanes but right now gold is dead aggression even. going in on it Miki just into the quarter of HP Miki has to fall off. aggression wants that tower he's getting very close and Miyuki's already at half health, so she's gonna have to be very careful. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we may be seeing something in the, the bot lane actually over by Blue Side Jungle. I wouldn't be surprised if Aggression gets the tower here. He probably Aggression will. He's going to push Miki back and he's going to take the tower. I yeah. yeah, like a clone. Now he's gonna push Aggression onto Miki as Miki is about half HP, but Miki does have to buff to support from his minions. I thought for a second there was something was going to go on by High Lords' Blue Side Jungle, but everyone backs away just trying to get vision. And we're seeing the jump onto Brimstone. And ultimately applying the flash has to be used. Oriana's going to use the orb to try to shield. Zach is going to try to do his bounce. Does catch Brimstone. Teleport's going to come out by Muki. And Camille's going to be coming in too. Grimstone does do the charge. A Thousands comes out. A great charge there by Muki. Damage is going left and right. And Rom's going to go down. War Cyclone's extremely low in health, and he's going to fall. But Rico's going to get the kill, so it's a 2 for 2 right now. Actually, a 3 for 2 in favor of Northern, because Camille comes in, takes out two. 
So one it's for one trades going back and forth in that fight, and I believe War Cyclone did end up pumping his ult too, which dropped yep. a lot of ONU's players about half HP, but the cleanup just couldn't come out as ONU responded with their ults, and Kai had a great ultimate where he just sniped Brimstone. It came down to, as soon as War Cyclone died, the damage went with him. Although Raelicas have it more uh, damage this time around, it just was not enough. So Ohio Norton will secure the Infernal Drake, and they're now going to take the lead. That is definitely one interesting channel. See, Mary is going to try to start the, the Rift Herald. They may be looking for a possible fight here. Now, I don't know if there is going to try to converge on this. Don't know why Iconic is planning, but all of ONU is coming in to try and assist Iconic in his plans to t stop Negata from getting this Rift Herald. As Worst Cycle jumps into about a quarter HP and does getting chased by Aggression. Aggression does end up getting the kill. Aggression does turn onto chasing Railwick now. Railwick dropping down to about a half HP. Aggression is going to end up taking about both of Marietta College's main DPS dealers. Yeah, so once again, they're able to take out Cyclone. They're, they're trying to shut out the Samira, and it's working. And Marietta does not really have a whole lot to provide defense for uh, Samira. I mean, they got the shield from Oriana, but that's about it. Ohio Nord's looking for a very early push onto the inhibitor tower, but they at least take out the Rift Herald before they can get another charge off. But with that, the gold lead is just dramatically shifting in Ohio Northern's favor, uh, up by almost 6,000 gold less than 19, 20 minutes into this game. And Marriott has not been able to secure a single tower. Yeah, Owen, you taking the lead by storm with a nearly 6k gold lead and a 3k tower lead. Actually, uh, no, not 3k tower lead. There's not 3,000 towers in this game. A 3 tower lead. see a pause let's see if we can figure out uh what is going on here oh um okay so it looks like ohio northern's having some internet issues yeah they're all getting some lag uh they are allowed to pause in fact i'm gonna leave the chat up just in, so we know when things are good uh so i think there's we have a rule where there's like two pauses uh, for the match so we're gonna let them try to figure out what's going with the connection I don't know how long it's going to take, but we'll just hold it up here, give them a chance. I mean, it wouldn't be fair to try to keep resuming the game if they're having lag issues. Mm -hmm. And of course, if there's any other issues, I'm sure I'll be notified on Discord. But considering this is three minutes, so basically what we're watching happened three minutes ago. And I haven't received any DMs yet, so I don't know if there's necessarily any major issues. Although, let me check just to make sure. Uh, nothing on my Discord, so... 
I'm going to guess that things are going to be okay, but we'll, I guess we'll see. We'll see three minutes later. Three, yeah, three, three minutes later. I wish we could just press the button. You need to have that an option later. on the stream, stream deck for the, for how many minutes uh, later. Oh, um, although I don't want a copyright infringement on from Viacom. <laughs> That's why you just say it yourself. That's true. I could say it myself. Like, or if you, uh, if we just get someone who really sounds like the guy. Okay, so now, now I'm getting some questions here. Um, so let me double check some things. Okay, so something tells me this pause may be a little longer than I expected. So technically, with the pauses, they they can like let's say if there's they still have internet issues, they can hold it back now. Well, I, I don't By, think like, it, rule book. I let me double check the uh, official GLEC rules. I don't. I mean, I don't think it's an indefinite pause, but I gotta remember what the rules are. Uh, let me see here. Um, they. Okay, apparently they redesigned the Discord. Great! We're trying to figure out, guys, the official rules on pauses or how long they are yeah. able to pause for. Okay. So it states that each team is allowed two five-minute pauses yep. per match for emergency use only, not for strategic right. purposes. Right, yeah. So this is... So, uh... meaning that they get five minutes right now. Do you know if they can use ten minutes just all up at once, or do they have to do pause, unpause, pause? I think it would be, like, if if a pause carries over five minutes, then the next, if it goes more than that, it would carry over. Okay. So I think it's, I think it's ten minutes... Two pauses or up ten. to ten minutes total. So, ten, so like, well, let's say if one pause uh, takes like two minutes, and they do another pause that takes three minutes. They've used up their pauses. They can't yep. use. They can't even though they haven't used ten minutes, they've already used it. Now, if they have one pause and it goes into six minutes, then I would think that the second pause would go into effect in that case. Okay. So that would mean like it just goes over, and then they, they only have one. Um, okay, so it's looking like this is going to take a little bit because, I mean, yeah, we're seeing here on Discord what's happening a couple minutes ahead, technically. Well, we're, what we see in game is three minutes behind. And it looks like they've been having internet issues for a, a little while. Yeah, so after 10 minutes, uh, I would say that's that's their two pauses. Let me double check if there's any other rules with it. Um, each team's allowed two five minute pauses per match. After that. What's going on here? All right, so yeah, I'm getting in touch with the coach. So it looks like like the the whole campus of Highland Northern is getting bad internet. Um, That's something we have commonly happen here. Yeah, that is true. Our internet here is not much better. I'm starting to think this is an Ohio factor. Is 
Just last week when we were doing matches, Spectrum Internet went down too. Okay, so we're gonna try to, they're gonna wait a little bit, cross our fingers, and hope that things work out. But um, there is a possibility the match might have to end um, prematurely. Now, if the match ends now, does Owen you take the victory, or is it a forfeit on Owen you side and Marietta takes it? Well, uh, from my discussion with the Ohio Northern's coach, um, if they're not able to continue, then it would be a, a forfeit on Ohio Northern's part. And maybe they'll take a two-one victory. Um, since they took since they took a win, they should, took a map. They should be granted the map. It should, yeah, I would think so. Yeah, it, it, I would say it's a two uh, two-one win. Um, but um, we'll take a look here. So I'm going to. I'm going to do one thing here for my players, just so they're aware of what's going on. Um, let see here, what's going on in the, in the chat. Okay, wait, they're saying they're, it's playable now. Um... I'm going to step away real quick. I'm going to to see if I can get some more uh, info here. So I'll be right back. All right. So I got one of the trip over that court. All right. So in the meantime, do you got any stories you want to share? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Putting you on the spot like that. <laughs> no. Is it fair? Sorry, guys. We didn't plan for this to happen, so we don't have Wait, wait, wait. Uh, it looks as though the game is starting again. The game is starting again, guys. Alright, so we're back at it. We don't have to have any unnecessary story time right now, thankfully. So it looks like Muki is going up. Uh, okay, yeah, so it looks like they were able to resume, huh? Yeah, yeah then. Yeah, so they were able to resume with uh, two minutes to spare. I am happy that ONU was able to resume. I would like to see this match played out to the fullest yeah, instead of a disqualification. You would, you, you don't want to see... I, I would hate to see a team uh, lose... I, I would hate to see a team have to do forfeit because of technical issues. Oh yeah, we can probably hide the chat now. Okay. Yeah, so I'm glad that their internet is working again. And then they can resume, but... Yeah, I know last year um, we played against Tiffin in the fall and they were having internet issues. They used their two pauses, um, but they still, they continue, so they didn't forfeit, but it was, we won, but it didn't feel like a, a win just because Tiffin was having internet issues at the time, so I felt bad for them. Right. But uh, even Tiffin said, I mean, those, these things happen, but... Um, yeah, I'm just glad that we're able to continue playing. I mean, even if we don't win this, at least we're able to play it out. Yes. It's better for both teams. Yep. Yeah, so Hanordon will start up the Infernal Drake. And they should be able to secure it. Because Marietta was actually hovering over Baron. They weren't going to take it, but at least try to get vision control for it. They're the struggling to get a Drake buff at the moment, as Onyo is just taking all of them. Well, what's happened is Ohio Norns won the last couple, the last two team fights for Infernal Drake, so they were able to secure it. So, so Sloppy will be taking down another turret, too. This is not looking good for Marietta. Marietta can, however, bounce back in this game as. The Zack goes in onto Relic with three other members of ONU and just... That's what they need. They're going to go to the Baron now. Uh, I don't think so, because Marion is up there. And they're basically... Well, the Marion is? They, they essentially just did... We did to High Northern what they just did to us. Exactly. Collapse onto their split like uh, The counter-aggression was perfect, perfect by Marion. That's what we, we need to see. However, and it looks as though ONU might succeed in taking another tower. Marietta's gonna take this chance to go for the Baron now, unlike how ONU was. This is really gutsy. ONU might be coming looking in to stop them, but I 
don't think that they have enough players to do that. No, there is only, uh, they only got the Baron at half health, and most of High Northern's already in position. So Merida has to retreat. They, I this don't, isn't good. This, I don't agree with that call. They should have at least gone for and try to get a tower. They don't have a single tower down at all this game. They're trying to put some damage onto Braum, and they're going to get the jump. I'm going to get hooked in by the Nautilus and get stunned yeah, out. Yuki cleaning up the kill. That's the pick Marietta needs. Owen Yu has to put... There's no way Owen Yu can press the aggression here. Uh, it's just their support that went down. So their damage dealers are still there. We see a nice two, pick, a two ults on... Huge ult. But, but Brimstone goes down. Poopy does end up getting a kill as aggression takes... A stance on Terrell, but that might not be what he wanted to do as three Marietta members turn on him. But Quickjaw coming in with his ult too. Drugs have a Marietta down to a quarter of HP, and it's only Kai there left to take a stance as she drops Worst Cyclone. He kills Worst Cyclone. Drops Rico Rico down to a quarter of HP. Rico does end up getting the kill on him as I believe that was Relic who was chasing down uh, Kai. Uh, um, Kai. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. with all that said, it's still a 4v3 in favor of a Ohio Northern getting an extra kill. So while Marietta did get some good kills, Ohio Northern technically won the fight, but everyone's so low that they're just going to go back and lick their wounds. Very interesting team fight we saw there. As it was I... a little sloppy, I would say. I mean, there, there were some good catches. So, like, Rayleigh had a really good ulti uh to catch i think it was i know it was zach and i can't remember it was i think it was camille maybe the other one and they were able to pop zach's passive but they weren't able to finish him off so he's able to reform So on the good news, like the damage is a bit more balanced. Raylick is going to be able to contribute more to team fights than he was able to in the last game. So if Cyclone does go down, it's not going to be as big of a difference. But we do need to see Cyclone try to get a bit more ahead because Merida is going to need that extra damage. And we do see a possible trying to engage onto Rico. He's going to be retreating, and they're going to try to do some poke onto Zach. And they're going to try to catch Cyclone. He's already at less than half health. He's gonna start putting some damage. Cataclysm comes the out. Ult coming from... That was a bloodbath. It's not over yet. They're still trying to put some damage onto aggression, so that's a 4 v one And this is exactly what Marina needs to get back into this game. I, d I, I... Marina is gonna... Should take the Drake... The, not the Drake, the Baron here. Yeah, they, they should be able to secure it. I mean... Kai is still up and may try something. I think if he ha he's just gonna poke and run away. Try yeah, trying to stall Marietta from taking the Baron, but I think that, that it's un it's unstoppable. Marietta is gonna take this Baron. So that's exactly what Marietta needs to get back into this game. They're still down 2k gold, but that Baron buff is gonna help with pushing some lanes. So now they need to try to get the and pushing going on they gotta get some towers it is 27 minutes and they don't have a single tower down yet this is this baron buff able to equivalent to the three drake buffs though that Owen Yu has i don't think Owen Yu is too sad about losing the baron buff here well they know they have to concede it but they're gonna flank around and look to try to catch marietta oh, infernal drake's up in three seconds so they're looking to try to grab it Owen Yu knows this, and they're trying to stop them. But with Marietta having that Baron buff, I don't think Owen Yu will be able to. No, especially since the fight's a bit more balanced now. And they're going to have to respect the Oriana. Marietta has finally taken the turret. You got to love the minions. That was all minions right there. Minions clutch. We call those winions. Yep, those are definitely winions. Maybe that's what Marietta needs. Just let the minions take the towers. Well, that's possible. <laughs> I've seen minions win games, like actually take out the Nexus. Marietta's trying to start up the Infernal Drake, and he's just getting deleted, so Marietta will secure that, and now they're gonna rotate around. Yeah, Owen Yu knew if they try to take a team fight there, they were not gonna win it. If Owen Yu takes a team fight there, I think that that just gives Marietta a drastic lead, as Marietta would have wiped the floor with Owen Yu. Mm -hmm. And get the Drake buff at the same time. Well, depending if the team fight is executed well. So we do see Owen Yu going back to the split pushing. Yeah. 
Looks like Vagar was looking to try to catch someone. Cataclysm comes out, and the Oriana comes out, catches three. Vagar gets popped. And now they're going to go into Braum. They're going to charge him up. He goes down. So that sh they should be able to secure another tower. Taking mid lane control. This could be really big. Opening up that mid lane for Relic. This this could be really good. It looks like they're going to push onto the mid lane inhibitor as well. And they're going to get that as two. As Zach's the only one there to try and stop them. But what is he going to do? Yeah, they're going to try to get the inhibitor. I don't think they're going to try to get the game yet. They're they gonna... should back off now. No, yes. they're not. They're not backing off. Can... They're, they're going to go for it. They want to end the map right here and now, maybe? That's too. That's really This gutsy. is risky. I, I don't really like this play from Marietta. Oh, yeah, yeah. They get a turn and they have to back off. There's no way. Yeah. They have to back off. Yeah. Brimstone's a quarter of HP. He might get stunned out and punished here. But he's able to flash out. Brimstone jump is still a quarter of HP, but... I... Warcycle right. slays Iconic and Warcycle with that Samira gets a double kill. The damage coming out from Warcycle as he chases down Spoopy, but Aggression comes in and is looking to take down Warcycle. It, it does indeed do that and he takes down Rico Rodriguez at the same time. Marietta technically won that, I think. It was a 3 for 2 in favor of Marietta, but Ohio Northern's trying to chase down the rest. They just need to get out of there. They're extremely low on health. If Ohio Northern tries to pick them off, I mean, death timers are pretty long now. That may allow them to get more stuff. Marietta was winning that team fight, and I would say that at the start that was a win for Marietta. Yeah. But like, Owen, you just came back and aggression, just chasing down the low HP more like one and relic, and that, that was just it. But here's the thing: with that push, even though it didn't seem like a good call, one of the Nexus towers is down. So Hell Northern only has one Nexus tower remaining. So if you win one more team fight, that's game. And then we go into game three. So all in you is forced to try and maybe defend the spawn here because they yeah. only have that one tower. Yeah. Now Baron buff has expired at this point, but the next Baron's going to be up in less than two minutes. Another turret has fallen. If Owen you wants to get back into this, they've got to push the aggression here now that Baron buff has denied. Two minutes remaining until the next one comes up. If Owen you may be able to capture this Baron, that could completely turn the tide of this game. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we were practically at 32 minutes in this game, so this could very well be something where the next team fight will decide the winner. It's not just turn to tie the fight, but it would this this pretty much declare the victor. And both Raelic and Cyclone are very well balanced. Yeah, the damage here is way more balanced. And even Muki has seven kills. So she's pretty tanky right now on that Malphite. I think the only one from Mar Marietta that doesn't have a kill is... Brimstone. But he has the most assists. That the 17 assists, yeah, that is huge. Yeah, so he doesn't need kills to be effective. He's still pretty tanky. I mean, I wonder, like, even though Ohio Northern had some internet issues and they were playable again, I don't know what their ping is like. I don't know if they're still having internet issues. But it just seems like ever since then, the momentum has definitely swung in Marietta's favor. Yes, indeed. And I... I would believe that they possibly are playing the game at a playable ping. Uh, I don't know if it's comfortable, but... Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like ONU would just, like, stop what they were doing before. Mm -hmm. And Marietta is just on the offensive now. Yeah, we see Infernal Drake is up in 30 seconds, so I think we're going to see another fight there. But yeah, I mean, I do hope that High Lord's not having internet issues. I would hate to... It, like, if we were to pull off the win, I would hate that to be the, the reason. I know High Northern did tell me that they would not actually mind forfeiting so they can yell at their IT department for making sure they have better internet. But, that would be the strat. Yeah, but... I do think, though, he would... The other cook would have messaged back if they were having still so bad issues. It could very well be, but so they might still say, okay, yeah, we were able to play, but we lost because of bad internet, but... If Owen, you can deny Marietta this Drake buff, this, that could be really good in turning the momentum. Yeah. But I think Marietta has the better setup right now. Yeah, they're, they're looking to... Drake has been started. How Northern technically has started up, but 
And we see Camille trying to get into the back line. And we're seeing a full engage onto Marietta. Camille's at about half health. The nice charge come in. Shut down by... Not by get shut down. So it's a one for one. Zach goes down for Ohio Northern. But, but War Cyclone goes down. And Ohio Northern right now is winning the fight. And Marietta's having to retreat. Jarvin, this is good for Ohio Northern. See, all that's left is Raylick and Cyclone, and, uh, not Cyclone, but Brimstone. They're going to have to back away. So Ohio Northern does secure the Drake. This could be a momentum changer for Ohio Northern. That is exactly what they wanted. And it looked like Marietta was going to win the team fight at first, but I think it was Aggression was able to take down War Cyclone in the midst of all that chaos, and then the damage is just gone. Yeah, and now their inhibitor has respawned. So I think that's going to be it for Super Minions. Remind me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but inhibitor turrets don't respawn, only inhibitors do. Correct. Yeah, so the inhibitor is still exposed. And if Marietta wants to win the game, at least one inhibitor has to be down before they can do any damage to the Nexus. But now we see how no they're heading over for the Baron. There's like one ward down, so they're going to try to get uh, at least some vision control. And then they're going to move back and try to push mid lane. Because that, that's how you win the game, you have to control the mid lane. Right now, Baron is up. Is Owen you going for Baron here? Is that their plan? It's either get a pick and go for Baron. I think that's I, the same. I don't think they for. would go for it. I think what they were well, they're going to try to split it. They're going to they're starting it up, but I think what a lot of teams do at this point is they'll start the Baron, knowing the other teams are going to get over there, and then they peel off and try to engage the fight. It's just kind of like baiting them to that Baron fight, and they recognize that Baron is not falling for it. So uh, if. Marietta does claim this Baron. I think it's still going to be evenly matched. And it's only a 400 gold difference, so it's it could definitely go either way. This is a very intense game, as if you look at the stats, both teams have almost the same exact stats on both sides with a two-kill lead for yeah, Marietta. Here's the thing, though. You got a 9-6-9 nine, nine Vigar. He is fully scaled. He has to be popped first. If he does, if he stays alive... Oh, they're going to go into War Cyclone. The Zac comes in trying to hook him out. And it's actually... War Cyclone does not. <laughs> they get his flash, which is a problem. Because now if they bounce on the oh, game, no. he does not have a way to escape. War Cyclone is just like, you want me, come get me, and chases them down the sport. And they're just scared of the Samir as all of Marietta is there to assist him. But here's the problem. Camille is just going to try to backdoor and start split pushing the bottom. So we see uh, a couple rotating down there to take out the Camille. They cannot let her just to continue to split push and take a free inhibitor tower and inhibitor. But it kind of puts Mary in a predicament. It's like, do they either give up the bottom inhibitor or do they give up the Baron? And they decide they're gonna let Miyuki go down the bot lane to take to try to work on Camille. While the rest of Mary tries to work on the fact that Ohio Norton started up the Baron. Or at least they were and then they retreated. Looks like Ohio Northern was trying to bait Marietta into taking a fight around the Baron. <laughs> and it looks like Aggression's gonna take an inhibitor turret within that fight as... Um, yeah, we see that. This is not like good for Marietta as Kai pops his ult and is able to take down War Cyclone. First off, jumping around in the corner of HP gets stunned out as the Zac goes in to try and kill him. But Aggression doing his own thing in the inhibitors. What is going on? Camille was able to take out Muki. And the inhibitor is down, so this is going to give Ohio Northern a chance to this try is, to finish the game. This is interesting. They might not even need the Baron. Ohio Northern pushing in. They're going to take a shot onto the, uh, the next inhibitor turrets, and they're going to go for the Nexus. Yeah, everyone from Marietta is very low Only on two health. people in Marietta have spawned. Relic is a quarter of HP, though. One thing real quick. There we go. I think they're taking a Baron push here. Like yeah, 100%. So they took two inhib- They weren't able to finish the game, so they were able to take two inhibitors. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't worry about that right now. Yeah, so they're able to take two inhibitors, and they're going to go- Well, they were going to go straight for the Baron. It looks like they're going to back off, try to buy out, and see if they can finish the game. Uh, Maria has to deny uh, this Baron from ONU. Or take the Baron themselves. If ONU takes the Baron, or Marietta takes the Baron, 
it could potentially lead to a push down mid lane onto the inhibitors. The thing that's going to be a problem, though, is you have super minions coming in both mid and bot lanes. Merida has to address it. If they ignore the super minions, then they're just going to finish off the the, uh, the Nexus. So you have to have someone in both lanes, which means a high Nora now has is going to have pre complete control over the Baron. Yeah. I I think a high Nora. If I okay, I might be wrong, it looks like they're going to set up around it. I think a higher Northern is going to end this without Baron. Or at least they're going to try to start it up. We do see an engage onto Camille. Three people are there. Cataclysm comes out. But two ults. All three ults are being used onto Camille. And she doesn't go down. That's Five a members of Marriott College chasing her. And oh, Owen Yu does succeed in getting the Baron. So that was a distraction from the Camille oh, yeah. as Owen Yu captures the Baron. They married to put in pretty much all their resources in the Camille. Do not get her. Ohio Northern gets the Baron. And looks like they're going to go straight for the, the uh, Elder Drake, which is up in 20 seconds. So Barry does not really have anything left to contest this fight. But Mary does not have a choice. You get Baron buff and you get Elder Drake? That's that going to be, be GG's. GG's. And Brimstone's going to get caught in the middle. We see the Brahmal going in. Brimstone somehow surviving that onslaught. And but aggression Rico's does gonna fall. But Brahma's gonna take out Relic. War Cyclone's the only damage left. And both he and Ryuki are gonna get deleted. So all that's left is Brimstone. And Ohio Northern Bobby is gonna try to. not want him to go away. Uh, they're just going to peel him off, and there's nothing that Merida can do. So, how Lord's going to go in and uh, finish off the next star in the Nexus. Spoopy does not want Brimstone to get away, but Brimstone's just like, come after me, bro, and he will end up going down. And this could be the match as they do take out both the things, and the Nexus will indeed end up going down. Ohio Northern is going to take this match 2 2 0 against Merida College. So with that, that is going to be it. Very close game, ladies and gentlemen, and very well considering that Ohio Northern was having very bad internet issues earlier, but they managed to pull through and get the game. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, like, compared to how Mary to play last week versus this week, it was definitely better. I mean, game one, uh, it was definitely rough, but they, they learned, they made adjustments. And this game, it was definitely a lot better. The damage was more balanced between Cyclone and Relic. And even Miyuki had a pretty decent performance in team fights. The, the Malphite definitely made a, a big difference over uh, the Malkai. But I think what happened there was Vigar just was starting to scale up. I mean, we see he ended 12 6 12. Um, he's got the Rabdon's death cap. He's got full, he's basically got a full item build. So he's gone fully online. And we would have to check to see what his AP was. But he was just able to do a ton of damage. I really enjoyed this match. I know the scoreline might say 2-0, but in my mind, it was close the entire time. Where mm -hmm. either team could have had one team fight. One. Where it would have changed the side of the entire match. Oh, yeah. And it just happened this time. It was Ohio Northern that was able to, to win that team fight. But, yeah. So, you, you got to give um, props to Marietta for that. It was a much better performance than, I think, how they played last week. So, and I think... I, I could be wrong with this, but I do believe that Ohio Northern is the toughest opponent in our schedule for this semester. So I have to double check who they're playing next, but I think the, the matchups are going to be a little bit more favorable for the remainder of the, the season. But Ohio Northern has a very good League of Legends team, so we can't forget that too. But All right, so that's going to be it for us for at least five hours because we still have one more match for you today, folks. We have our Rainbow Six team going against Casanova College. It finally took me a while to get it right, but they're going to be going up against Casanova College tonight uh, at 8.30 Eastern time. So we'll be back then. So we're not going to have the stream up for five hours doing nothing. Sorry, not going to happen. So we're going to take it down, but we'll be back up about a half hour beforehand. So hopefully you will be back with us this evening to check that out. I know our, our Rainbow Six team is very excited for it. They're looking forward to it. And then, of course, next Monday, actually in just a couple of days, Overwatch up against Shawnee State. And then Tuesday, our Rocket League team will be playing against Manchester and Lord's University starting at 8 o'clock. So we're going to start having matches every almost every day of the week. So 
for all the latest updates and announcements, please be sure to follow us on social media. You can go to our Twitter at Merida Esports. You can go to Facebook.com slash Merida Esports. We have our Instagram at Merida. Everything's at Merida Esports. We have our Instagram over there. We even have our YouTube, although it's a bit.ly link because we don't have the vanity URL yet. But if you want to watch any of our previous VODs, you can go to bit.ly slash Merida Esports and that will take you to our YouTube channel. All right, so from all of us here, thank you for watching and see you later tonight. Yeah, we hope to see you tonight.